Charles Law. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about another one of the gas laws, and that is Charles's Law. And this law relates changes in volume with changes in temperature. And so we have a, an equation here for Charles' Law, and you can see that V1 divided by T1 is equal to V2 divided by T2. So basically, we're going to have some initial volume and initial temperature of the gas, and we're going to find either the final volume after we change the temperature or the final temperature after we change the volume. And in this case, we're going to have constant pressure and constant moles of gas. Now, Charles's Law brings up a very important fact when it comes to all gas laws, and that means all of them. And that is that you always need to use the Kelvin temperature unit in gas laws. So we've talked, we're talking about Charles law right now. A little later, we're going to talk about the ideal gas law, but you always need to use Kelvin in these problems. So as a helpful reminder, I'm going to give you the conversion between Celsius and Kelvin to help you remember. So Kelvin is equal to degree C plus 273. Okay, so let's look at a couple of representations for Charles Law. Now, when we have low temperature, then the volume of the gas is small. So think about it, that kind of, that makes sense. So let's say that we blow up a balloon and we go outside in the winter time. So we've had a very sudden change in temperature. It's much colder and the volume of that gas is going to shrink up. The temperature is much lower. Okay, so as the temperature decreases, the volume is going to decrease. Now, if we increase the temperature, okay, so let's say we do the opposite. We start with a balloon that had a little bit of gas in it. We put it in the freezer, and then we suddenly took it out, maybe took it outside in the summer on a 90 degree day. That volume of gas in that balloon is going to expand. So when the temperature is larger, the volume is larger. All right, so let's do a problem with Charles' Law and, and do a little bit of practice and discussion of how to solve these problems. So uh, we're going to have a sample of gas with an initial volume of 34.8 milliliters and an initial temperature of 315 Kelvin. Now notice we're already in Kelvin, so we're in good shape there. That will not always be the case. Sometimes, a lot of the times, you're going to see Celsius units in a problem for various gas laws. So what is the new volume if the temperature is increased to 559 Kelvin? So we're going to assume constant pressure and amount for the gas. So since we have volume and temperature, we're going to be using Charles' Law for this calculation. Okay, so we're, here's Charles' Law, and we know that we're given the initial volume and the initial temperature, okay? And so we have V1 and T1. And we also have the new temperature, which is T2, so that's going to go down here. So let's go ahead and plug everything in, and this is where we are right now. And so again, the temperature is already in Kelvin, so we're in good shape there. We don't have to worry about a conversion. Okay, now we're going to solve for the final volume. So what we're going to do, we have to move this 559 Kelvin over here. So we're going to multiply both sides by 559 Kelvin in the numerator because it needs to cancel out on this side of the equation. So 559 Kelvin times 559 Kelvin on this side. And we see that those 559 Kelvin cancel on the side with V2. And on the other side, the Kelvin units cancel for the temperatures and we're left with just milliliters. And milliliters is a volume unit, so that's good, because we're looking for V2. We're looking for the final volume. So now we can go ahead and do the math. 559 times 34.8 divided by 315. And that's going to give us V2 as 61.8 milliliters. Okay, so again, we're in volume units. This is good. Notice we also have three significant figures. Let's go up to up here and look at each of our given values and we can see that they all have three significant figures very unambiguously. So our final answer needs to have three significant figures as well. Okay, so let's do another example. And in this example, we have a couple of wrinkles. So we have a sample of gas that has an initial volume of 34.8 liters and an initial temperature Bing, 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 negative 67 degrees Celsius. 
Okay, so we already know we have a conversion here that has to be done. What must be the temperature of the gas for its volume to be 25.0 liters? Okay, so now we're looking for T2. All right, so this brings up another little small issue. Obviously, we know that we have to convert the temperature from degrees C to Kelvin. So we're going to do that on the next slide. But first, I want to talk about the reciprocal form of Charles' law. Now, there is nothing stopping you from using the original form of uh, Charles' law and solving for T2, okay? You can certainly do that with algebra, not a problem, but some students actually find it easier to just take the reciprocal of Charles' law, which is gonna put T2 in the numerator, and then you'd solve it in the same form as we did in the previous problem. So notice that all we did was flip T1 and V1, so now T1 is on top, V1 is on the bottom, and then we do the exact same thing on the other side. So we're gonna flip T2 and V2, now we end up with T2 on the top, V2 on the bottom. So you can check to make sure you did it right because you should have V1 and V2 in the numerator in the original form, V1 and V2 in the denominator in the reciprocal form, same thing with T1 and T2. T1 and T2 are um, equal to each other in the denominator in the original form and then in the numerator in the reciprocal form. Okay, so that's just another little uh, trick to keep on keep in your book, especially if you're not confident in your algebra. But if you are confident in your algebra, then you should just solve for T2. Okay, uh, the next thing that we need to do is convert that initial temperature to Kelvin. Now we're going to keep the sign. It's negative 67 degrees C. So that's negative 67 plus 273, and that's going to give us 206 Kelvin. Okay, so essentially we're just subtracting 273 minus 67. So we're going to get T1 equal to 206 Kelvin. Uh, we're going to use that reciprocal form of Charles' law. And so remember, you can use the original one also and solve for T2. In this case, we need to get rid of 25.0 liters. So what we're going to do is multiply both sides by 25.0 liters. And when we do that... 25.0 liters is going to cancel out on this side. On the other side, we're going to end up with liter units in both the numerator and the denominator. They're going to cancel out. So then we can just do our math. 25.0 times 206 divided by 34.8. And we're going to have T2, which turns out to be 142 Kelvin. And so again, three significant figures. Oh, interesting. So a case here could even be made that maybe we should have only two significant figures in our T2. So let's go up here and take a look. We have a sample of gas and its original temperature is negative 67 degrees C. That's only two significant figures. So what I would do probably is round this to 150 Kelvin for two significant figures. All right, so in summary, the behavior of gases can be modeled with gas laws. Okay, so we know that. We've talked about Boyle's Law, and that relates to gases pressure and volume at constant temperature and amount. And now we've also talked about Charles' Law, which relate, relates the gases volume and the temperature at constant pressure and amount. And always remember, in gas laws, the temperatures must always be expressed in Kelvin.